Hi there, Figmentor again, and this time I'll be talking about concept design as it applies to humanoid robots using Clip Studio Paint's awesome features. I'll go over my concept art thinking process, thumbnailing design tips and tricks, time saving tips and tricks for concept production using Clip Studio Paint. Let's get started! Humanoid Robots their concept art starts much like other character concept art. The most important thing comes first. We first focus on the biggest details of the character. The basic shapes, the shape language, the hierarchy of big, medium, and small, incorporating complex and simple shapes to contrast each other, and going through it from the biggest details first and adding more details along the way. What dictates the shape, details, and forms of our character? The big idea, of course. This is where concept art becomes a matter of problem solving and less of art. This is where you answer the questions, what would the hero character look like if he were agile? or if he were from a specific background, maybe. Perhaps an unwitting repurposed piece of machine? Answering these questions while thinking of shape design guidelines is what I believe concept art is going to be all about. And it all starts with the idea and identifying what we want. Then we go ahead and do the biggest of all the details, the thumbnail or silhouette of the character. Then we fill in the blanks with the answers we have for the questions we posed earlier. This is where the structure of the character comes into form. Lastly, we just add flourishes to the character to sell the concept even more. Thumbnailing phase. In thumbnailing the silhouettes, we're thinking less about the details of the character, but rather how the character reads at first glance. And to do that, I typically zoom the way out of the canvas. And I do a small little doodle that I think would read well for me. So here I'm trying to sketch a more agile looking character. They tend to be slender because bigger objects or bigger characters tend to move slower based on our understanding. In doing the silhouettes, I'm also taking into consideration shape design. Shape design is a broad topic and it can be discussed in a chapter of a book altogether. But basically speaking, when we see images or pictures, our brains process shapes and have natural tendencies and predispositions towards certain shapes and angles. Almost all characters in pop culture have undergone the shape design process. And this is evident even in characters like Mario, who's soft and round looking. Then we have Bowser who has sharp horns and a bulky shape. In posing, we typically associate brave characters with more stable poses with two feet on the ground forming a stable triangle. Agile characters typically are posed off balance at times to convey that they are in motion. In designing protagonists, we typically avoid sharp pointy shapes as this raises some alarms in our brain naturally and thus protagonists tend to be more round, less pointy, as compared to the anti-heroes and villains.
We also have posing. Posing agile characters off balance with a good clear read is very important. This gives the viewer an assumption from the first glance. Posing a character from a worm's eye view also makes the character look bigger and more menacing as well. A strong line of action can also really help to sell the character's personality, even in thumbnail view. So here are some thumbnailing guidelines I tend to follow when designing characters. I just try to spitball my ideas without much care for details at this stage. I, I'm not afraid to experiment since these doodles are quite fast to draw. I also throw out ideas when I don't think they're working. I'm not really that attached to the thumbnails and I tend to alter the shapes whenever I feel like they need altering. One neat thing Clip Studio Paint has is the transparency brush when you press C on your keyboard. This switches the brush from brush mode to transparency mode and thus you can add and subtract shapes quite easily. Next up we have the sketching phase. We are working in passes and I've already decided the two characters that I think I'll be pushing onto the next pass or next stage. So at this stage, I'm just sketching and using line art so that I can understand and slowly but surely add more rough details to my work. Some people don't need line art and prefer to use the brush and just go painting values directly. While this is an option for some, most people are more comfortable more comfortable defining the forms using lines first with guides on their forms following the contour here I'm just simply defining the forms as I go just sketching away using a reliable line making tool not worrying too much about it being rough at this stage since it's a stage that only I can see or in some cases your art director or the client will get to see at some point. So it's very important that we establish the forms at this stage. Cylinders become cylinders and Plates become plates. You only need to put in the details that you think make sense for you. Where the planes face is very important later on when you light the subject. So Clip Studio Paint has a very neat feature when doing the final line art. It's called Vector Layers. Vector Layers are a godsend, especially for mechanical design concepts, where there are a lot of details that go across and overlap with each other, like panels, wires, cylinders, and so on and so forth. Oh, and by the way, Here's a short aside on pareidolia. Pareidolia is the tendency for incorrect perception of a stimulus as an object, pattern, or meaning known to the observer, such as seeing shapes in clouds, seeing faces in inanimate objects, abstract patterns, and when designing characters, especially humanoid robots, 
pareidolia can definitely play a huge part like in the case of this head which could be a coffee maker for all we know and this is why I designed the heads of the mechs the way I did okay back to topic here I'm using a hotkey for vector erase in combination of freely using the G pen to create clean line art I just stroke over two line arts and when I go to vector erase I can easily erase the overlaps additionally you can also manipulate your lines by holding control and regarding design as much as I can I tend to put simple and complex shapes opposite of each other this to me typically looks good and this kind of shape typically also happens often in nature such as the human body and so on and so forth and Having that clean line art will pay off later on when we go to color our subject. Vector layers are also very easy to clean even after you're done with them. And to close holes while filling you can easily connect disjointed lines and even adjust the line weight to imply depth as well and it's very important to clean your line art layer as a clean line art layer makes it super easy to add color layers later on using clip studio paints fill tools i typically arrange the layers and group base layer colors logically example the armor will go on top of the underlying parts, the tubes and whatnot. This makes it easy to go back and add details later on to change colors and so on and so forth. Not to mention applying correction layers to these grouped layers will also be easier if they're grouped logically and defining the forms earlier will also help us with lighting the subject speaking of lighting the subject i feel like you don't really need a complex lighting setup with multicolored light sources when doing concept art you only need the light that will define your forms Usually one to two light sources are enough for this and in this case, I only even use just one from the top to describe the form of the humanoid robots I designed To convey or imply what material the surface of your subject is you can also paint and control how much light bounces off the surface like for example on the metal I use a sharp specular highlight and a silver met metal color to make the material look like metal just like just with lighting alone Keep in mind 
the purpose of your concept art and not to go overboard when adding the details you can polish the work as much as you want from this point but keep keep in mind that this is not meant to be a finished illustration and concept art usually goes through a lot of changes before it becomes production ready and if you detail your concept art too much at this point you might grow too attached and you won't be able to explore even more interesting designs going forward so that's it for the blue character who I think or at least I want you to think is a sort of utility humanoid robot and now I'm moving on to the villain it's villain time for the other villain looking character I basically did the same process as with the smaller character so I'll just double up the playback speed and we'll play some more rock music as you see me struggle to add the details and <laughs> do some self-correcting
Okay, I hope that you at least learned something from this tutorial. And thanks for watching.